Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Tom, and on behalf of the DRC ministry, would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all for our today's class. Today, we'll be starting a meditation on the subject of wonder of the cross being taken by God's servant, Brother Dr. Koshi Matthew, who is joining us from Mumbai. We welcome you, dear brother, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we would also like to welcome our brother Suresh Balikati, who will be helping us at the end with a word of prayer. Shall we prayerfully uh, look towards today's meditation? Shall we pray? Our heavenly, heavenly gracious Father, we thank you and praise the Lord God for giving us this wonderful opportunity to come to your presence, to be seated under your feet, Lord. What a privilege we enjoy as your children, that we can learn and we can study and we can be instructed, disciplined by your words. And this privilege we enjoy through your son, Lord, who came down to this world and redeemed us through the work on the cross. And Lord God, thank you that we, as your children, are always awed at what you have done for us, even before our birth. Thank you, Lord, that you chose us from before the foundation of the earth. And thank you, Lord, that you have great plans for us. Thank you for the purpose with which you have joined us back into the fold, Lord. Today, Lord God, as we will meditate on this wonderful topic, the topic that brought us to you, Lord, the wonder of the cross, we thank you for your dear servant, Brother Dr. Koshi Matthew Uncle, whom you have been blessing and using in all ministries and amongst us also. We pray that I may bless him, strengthen him, keep him as he speaks to us. Lord God, you may uh, speak to each one of our hearts to rededicate our lives, to re-examine our lives, and Lord God, to be more fruitful for you, Lord. Pray for all of us who are joining in. You may remove all the obstacles, be it in the medium, be it in other distractions, so that, Lord, we may, in the oneness of spirit, be able to meditate on the study together, Lord. Once again, submitting, dear Brother Koshi Matthew, into your hands, and we submit each one of us, and this time, uh, in answer to the Master's name, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May I hand over to Brother Koshi Matthew? Good morning. Thank you, Tom. It's a great joy for me to be with you once again. Last week, uh, last month, uh, we were studying about the wonder of the cross. We took the first class, that is, the about Simon the Cyrenian. We have seen. We were considering about the three men who were touched by the cross on this day of crucifixion. We have seen that Jesus Christ himself said, when I will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. So we have seen that how Lord Jesus Christ drew all men to himself when he was lifted up on the cross of Calvary. So last week we considered about Simon the Cyrenian. Three men who were drawn to the Lord on the day of crucifixion was one, the Simon the Cyrenian. We have gone into the details about that. Second person who was drawn to the cross was the thief on the cross. He confessed. And uh, he became the, became the first man to enter into the paradise along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then lastly, we see the centurion who was in charge of the crucifixion. He also turned to the Lord on the day of crucifixion. So these are the three men who were drawn to the cross on the day of crucifixion. That is why we took this subject and called the subject of the wonder of the cross. Cross is so wonderful, it draws everyone to itself. Jesus himself said, when I will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. All men. You know, the whole human race was composed of the children of Noah. Shame, harm, and Japheth. So, 
either anyone, one of us will be belong to this group, these families. Now you look at these three men we have seen earlier, that they belong to these three families. The Simon the Cyrenian, Cyrenia is an African country. We know the Africans are the descendants of Ham. So we see the Hamites were drawn to the Lord. Secondly, we see the thief on the cross. He knew something about the Jewish people and he knew about the Messiah who is going to come and rule upon the earth. He knew the Messiah will come as a king. That means definitely he is a Jewish man. Otherwise, he would not have thought of Messiah. He said, remember me when you come in your kingdom. So we see the man who was on the cross, the thief, he was a Shem's family. Jewish people are Shemites. And lastly, the Roman soldier, the Romans, the Italians, they are Jephthites. So we see all three men, Shem, Ham, and Japhets. The descendants were drawn to the cross on the day of crucifixion. And we have seen earlier also that the same thing we see when the gospel was preached to the world, it was affected all these three groups. Acts chapter 8, 9, and 10 is a very beautiful example of that. In chapter 8, we see the eunuch, an African, is getting saved there. He was a Hamite. And chapter 9, we see the salvation of Paul, who belonged to an Israelite, and Shem's family. So he was Shem. Whereas in chapter 10, we see the Roman centurion, Cornelius, is getting saved there. So we see even on the cross, as well as while the gospel was preached, the three groups of people, the children of Noah, they were all drawn to the cross. So we see the power of the cross in this one. This is what I was, our study was, just to briefly explain the things what we have heard earlier in our previous class last month. Now, let us turn to the passage for today's class. That is, today we are going to look into the life of that thief who accepted Jesus as the Savior, called him Lord, and entered into the paradise along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 39 to 43, we will initially will read. And, and let us analyze this particular person, the thief on the cross. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou, thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Yeah. May the Lord bless the reading of this portion of the scripture. We have seen that the first man who was drawn to the cross was Simon the Cyrenian, was from the family of Ham. Now, this man, we have seen that he knew something about the Messiah. He knew something about the kingdom that is going to come. So that shows very clearly that he is a Jewish man. Being a Jewish man, he belongs to the family of shame. Now, keeping in mind, let us look into analyze about this character. All the four gospel writers are referring about this particular incident. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke calls him in a different ways. In some of the times, some of the times, sometimes they are called as thieves. And Luke is calling as a male factors. And also transgressors. These are the words used by all these gospel writers. John also referring to this particular incident, 
But he says that other, the two others were also crucified with him. He calls them others crucified with him. So we can see that all the four gospel writers are referring to this particular incident. And if you analyze the words which you use, thieves, transgressors, male factors, and all these things, in its original language, we see that these words are different meaning and it shows the intensity of their wickedness. You know, the same word here used as the male factors or thieves is the same word used in Luke's gospel about the parable of the Good Samaritan. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, we know that one man was coming from Jerusalem, he was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and on the way, way, he was caught by the robbers or the thieves and robbed him. And the same word is used there. And if you analyze the word which is used there in Luke, and other passages. This particular word is used about 15 times in the New Testament. And out of 15 times, 11 times it is translated as thieves. And four times it is translated as robbers. And if you analyze the meaning of that word which is used, that means they are very wicked robbers. They are very wicked people. Mark is in chapter 15, verse 28. Mark is calling them the transgressors. And that is a criminal activity, the most wicked criminal. That is a criminal with an extreme wickedness. That is the meaning of it. So these people were thieves or robbers, and probably they were robbing the travelers on the way. It looks like that. They were notorious. Highway robbers, we can call them as, they were notorious highway robbers. They were, they were very cruel in their behavior. They never had any fear of God in their mind. So that is very clear from this passage. So they were a menace to the society. They were very harmful to the society. No one was pleading for their uh, protection. Everyone deserves that they should be killed. And we see that they were government, the Roman authorities decided them to crucify. So these are the notorious, we can call them notorious highway robbers. <coughs> Both of them we see that. So we are seeing that these people are, have probably knew about Messiah. So they are Jewish people in one sense. Now, what they did to Jesus, that is what we have to understand. Now, look at verse, chapter Mark's gospel, chapter 15, verse 32. There we see that they reviled him. Mark 15, verse 32, we will read. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. The day that crucified him were reviled him. And same way in Matthew chapter 27, verse 44 also, they we see that they railed at him, it is used. So they reviled at him, they railed at him. Even we have seen in this uh, verse 39, Luke's gospel, 30, uh, 23, verse 39. We have already read that verse. Just one of the male factors who are and railed at him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. So we see that the words are used, they reviled at him, they railed at him. Actually, the thieves only just repeated what the public was doing. Public was doing the same thing to him. They mocked at him. The chief priests were there, the scribes were there, and all were reviled at him and railed at him. Matthew chapter 27, verse 39 to 44, if you read, we will see that particular things are mentioned. Matthew 27, verse 39 to 44. And they that passed by reviled him, 
wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also, the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him trust in him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. And the thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Yeah, the thieves also cast the same in his teeth. They did the same thing. The chief priests were there, the priests were there, the scribes were there, the Pharisees were there. All of them were mocking at him. And the public also reviled at him. That is very clearly mentioned that. So we see that they reproached and spoke to him in a blasphemous manner. That is what they did to Jesus. And these thieves, they repeated what the public did and the chief priest did. Now, the question is uh, what they spoke. If you want to know what they spoke, we see that they were the, un the thieves, both uh, both of them in the initially, both of them reviled them. Both of them were accusing the Lord Jesus Christ. But later on, we see that one was changed, the other was accusing continuously. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 29, verse 39, we read that he, what the other person has done. If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. So the one who was not saved, Unsaved man, he was telling that if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. That means he is questioning his deity and his power. He understood, he think, thought that he is just an ordinary man. He is not God and he cannot be able to do anything. So we see the man, unsaved thief, he is questioning his deity and power. Now the question in our mind arises one thing. Why these thieves accused Lord Jesus Christ? He has not done anything to them. And he probably, probably, they might have seen him for the first time there. And what made them to accuse him? What made them to revile? Normally, when the, all of three of them, in the same level of judgment, both, all of them are going to be crucified, naturally, they should join together. Instead of joining with the Lord Jesus, guys, they started reviling up, railed at him, and they started accusing him there. What was the main? You know, we look at that. We, if you look at that, we see that they accused him vehemently. That is what we read about that. And in a normal case, we see that they should not accuse. When because both all of them were suffering at the same level. Now, the reason for this accusation, we have to analyze why the thieves accused Lord Jesus Christ. Now, according to, we know the background, if you like, analyze and connect all the passages related with the crucifixion, we gather one thing. Normally, the crucifixion is a process. It takes so many days. It will not happen on one day. The authorities expect that the one who is crucified should die slowly. A slow death is expected. In that case, normally they never expect a person to be crucified on the day of feast. Because on the feast day, they never allow the dead body to be hanged on the cross. So generally, they don't crucify a person on the feast day. Even in the case of Lord Jesus Christ, they never thought of crucifying him on the feast day. If we see that, the Jewish leaders, they were thinking very seriously the, how they can catch hold of Jesus Christ and how they will kill. But they decided one thing that they should not kill him or crucify him during the feast day. Look at that very clearly. We read in that Mark chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Look at that. Again in Matthew chapter 26, verse 4 and 5. These two passages. We'll read 
Mark chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, there we see that the authorities already secretly decided that they should not kill Jesus during the feast day. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Yeah. They were afraid that there will be an uproar of the people if they do it on the feast day. The reason, because from all over the world, the Jewish people are gathered there. And all the Jewish people is favoring Lord Jesus Christ. They thought he is Messiah. So if they try to crucify him during the feast day, there's a possibility of a revolt among the Jewish people. So again, Matthew chapter 26, 4 and 5, same thing is repeated. You can read that also. Matthew 26, 4 and 5. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Yeah. So again, say Mark and Matthew repeated the same thing. They decided, the authority decided that they should not crucify him. On the, but again, we read that he was taken on the feast day and they crucified him. Why? Because they initially they thought not to do it on the feast day because there will be a reward. But later on, they changed. The reason is that because on the feast day, the Roman authorities will make maximum security measures in Jerusalem because there should not be any reward. So the number of soldiers in Jerusalem during that period will be very high. High security will be there. Apart from that, we see that on that day, Pilate was also there in that place. Normally, the Roman governor, he is not staying in Jerusalem. He stays in a far place called Caesarea. Caesarea was the area, is the place where the palace of the governor is there. And he ruled the land of Palestine from Caesarea. But because of need of a security purposes and to oversee the security purposes during the festival time, there should not be any revolt against the Roman authorities. The governor himself came to supervise it. So the Jewish people thought like that. Probably this is the best time to crucify Jesus Christ. Because there's a high security is there, the powers, the soldiers are there, and governor himself is available. So they decided to catch hold of him and to crucify on the feast day. So if you look at the all background, we can understand one thing. It was a sudden decision by the authorities that they should crucify Jesus on the Passover day. But divine order was very clear. God, the Father, he knew that. He is the Passover lamb and he has to die on the same day during the Passover day. That is why the human thoughts were different, but the divine plan was perfect. And they did it. Not only that, it is already prophesied that he will be counted one among the transgressors in Isaiah 53. We read verse 12, see that. They numbered him among the transgressors. Then it is very interesting that the divine council was decided that he should be crucified along with the transgressors. It looks like that. These two thieves, they were there. They were not supposed to die on that day. They already, judgment was passed that they should be killed. They should be crucified. They would have done it on some other day. But all of a sudden, the Roman authorities decided to crucify them along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, it was a fulfillment of the prophecy. But the thieves, they never knew that. They thought that, of course, they may, they, they may have heard about the judgment, but they thought that they will get a little more time for them. But all of a sudden, on the day of Passover, when the authorities decided to crucify them, they might have encode what is the reason for that. They might have call, come to know that there was a man called Jesus whom they are going to crucify today. 
the Jewish people wanted him to be crucified on that day. So because of that, you too also will join with him and they will crucify. Probably that made this thief to get animosity against Lord Jesus Christ. It is because of Jesus that today we are going to die. So they thought that this is the reason for that. Sinners always think that that may delay. They thought that that will not come all of a sudden. We know about the parable of the rich fool. He was accumulating everything, but he never thought of that. The sinners are always like, they never think of that. They think that they are going to live here forever. These two thieves also thought that they will, they will have a little more life. They never thought of life, uh, death. But all of a sudden, on the festival day, the death came, so they were very much upset about it. And they knew that the authorities decided to execute them suddenly because of Jesus. Probably that made them to accuse him and to revile against him. But as they were, both of them in the beginning, they accused him. But all of a sudden, one of the thieves changed his heart. And that is what we read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. Then he was telling to the man who was talking against Lord Jesus Christ, the unsaved thief. And he is rebuking. We see in verse 40, 23, verse 40, look at that, what he's saying. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Yeah, look, look at that. This man is saying, Does not thou fear God? In their life, they never feared God. There was no fear of God in their eyes. All throughout the life, they were robbing, robbing notorious robbers of that country. Now he's talking about the fear of God. What caused him to fear God? That means that man has feared God. What made him to fear God? And if you look at very carefully, there was no miracle happened, no earthquake happened, no extraordinary thing happened at that particular point of time. He saw the chief priests, the scribes and Pharisees, and the general public are accusing Christ. And he saw some feeble women are following him. And the thief might have noticed all these things. No miracle has happened. But we see that all of a sudden, the fear of God came upon him. How? What made him to do like that? What was the reason for that fear of God that kept his heart? And he's telling, Do, does, not, does not thou fear God? That means he had a fear of God. We see that happened because of two reasons. In the midst of all these accusations, we see that he heard the prayer of Lord Jesus Christ. What was the prayer? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He heard that prayer. There was no miracle. He heard the words of Lord Jesus very clearly. But we see Jesus was praying for the enemies. He never could imagine that. That here is a man who is praying for the enemies. And he is praying to the God, the Father. Forgive them. And we see Jesus Christ on the cross. He was arguing like a lawyer before the Lord. Lord, you forgive them. Of course, they are worthy of punishment. What they are doing to me is really they are eligible to die. What they are doing is wrong. They should be punished. But Lord Jesus Christ pleaded the Father, forgive them. And only one reason is reason, telling that for forgiving them. They are doing it ignorantly. As a lawyer, he's arguing one cause for them that to forgive is to ignorance was there. As Jewish people, they ignorantly crucified Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul, when he was writing the Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, very clearly mentioned that. The Jewish leaders crucified him ignorantly. We'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew, 
for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory yeah they if they had known that he is the prince of glory they would not have crucified him that means they did it ignorantly that is very clearly jesus was arguing with the father forgive them for they are doing it ignorantly so this thief heard that prayer of lord jesus christ secondly he was looking at the accusation made upon him and it is very clearly written there this is jesus of nazareth the king of jews nothing else is there no accusation is there he said that he is the king of jews and he looked at the face of jesus he understood he is very unique he is not like any robber or a thief so he was gripped by the fear of god because of that two reasons when he saw the writings he understood he is a, he is the king of jews he is the messiah whom we were waiting for and that gripped his heart and he feared god so we see the two reasons for fearing god one we see that he was heard the prayer of lord jesus christ he saw how he was praying to the father for his enemies secondly he saw the writing on the cross and you look at that they he repeated earlier the words of the chief priest and the princes now he is arguing for lord jesus christ and telling the other person the thief that should not do like that you should have the fear of god we know probably this chief priest and the scribes they might have heard the conversation between the thief and the lord jesus christ the thief is telling remember me see we read that he is asking lord jesus christ remember lord he is calling him lord lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom the words probably heard by the chief priest and the scribes and that probably made them to approach pilot they went to pilot and said like that you have written that jesus the jesus the king of jews no no you have to change that you have to say say that he said like that pilot did only one good thing in the whole process that he did not change that he said what i have written is written so that writing on the cross probably made the thief to repent to understand that jesus is truly the king of jews when robbers repent and convert the religious leaders get upset they bring anti conversion bill because the robbers are converting the robbers are confessing and they are coming to the lord that is the reason why they they were trying to change that writing on the cross but we see that pilot did not change that writing jesus the king of jews so we have seen the two reasons why the thief changed his mind one the prayer secondly the writing on the cross now repentance and confession is very clearly we see that and he said that he he was filled with the fear of god the fear of god will come only when a person is really repentant we see in may romans chapter 3 verse 18 says that there's no fear of god in the eyes of a sinner and we see that a sure repentance in the heart of this man we see that he repented about his sin and look at that what he says about that he really repented we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds we look at that what he says verse 41 and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds but mm-hmm. this man had done nothing amiss this man has done nothing amiss he is publicly confessing his sin he said we have done that we are worthy of that wages of sin is that he admitted that and he says that but jesus he is dying innocently 
He is an innocent person. So declaring the innocence of Lord Jesus Christ and saying that he is a sinner and the, why? Why he is dying? Because of his sin. Here we see the public acknowledgement of this thief. We see that he acknowledged Jesus is smitten and marred and helplessly hanging on the cross as his Lord and King. Only by faith he accepted it. He understood that Jesus is really the King. I believe we asked for the second uh, second Corinthians chapter four verse eight. We uh, four chapter four verse six says that on the the face on the face of Jesus we see the glory of God. Look at read that second Corinthians chapter four verse six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See. On the face of Jesus, he was staring at the face of Jesus. It was mud, it was bleeding, that is all right. But he understood on the face of Jesus, on the cross, he saw the glory of God. And that glory that was on the face of Jesus shined into his heart. His heart was darkened. The darkness was removed. And the thief's heart was enlightened by the glory of God that was on the face of Jesus Christ. So we see that he has completely transformed. He understood by faith that this is really the king. As it is written, he is really the king. And he declared publicly, this man had done nothing amiss. Clearly, publicly accepted the innocency of Jesus Christ. And he accepted that he himself is a sinner. He did no sin, yet they crucified him. He understood that. By faith, he understood one thing, and he calls him Lord. This is how the repentance comes. And to call him Lord, you have to admit that you are a sinner. You have to admit that Jesus has not done anything. He is a sinless one. He is dying for your sake. And he is addressing him, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. By faith, we see that he understood the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. He saw a far away place. In the future, he is going to come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is going to establish his kingdom. Probably the thief might have, by faith, he saw the glorious appearance of Christ on the Mount of Olives. And we see that he is requesting the Lord to remember him at that time. But Lord Jesus Christ has promised him, Worldly, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So we see the wonder of the cross. How impact it has created in the mind of this man. We see that cross is changing. The most dreadful man here. We see Simon the Cyrenian. He was a poor farmer there. But this thief is a perverted man. The criminal. So the cross can change a poor man. A cross can change a perverted mind. And we see the centurion was a powerful man. God can change him also. So here we see that the thief was changed. Now look at that, how he got saved. It was absolutely by faith. Nothing else is there. It is absolutely by the grace of God. You look at carefully about this thief. His both the hands are named. He cannot do anything for God. He cannot offer anything to God for his salvation. His both the legs are named. He cannot walk to any pilgrimage, any church, any place. He can go, not go. So his both the hands and the both the feet are named. Helplessly hanging on the cross. Only two things are free. One is a heart is free. And his lips are free. We see that he believed in his heart that Jesus is the king. He is going to come again. And not only that, he confessed with his mouth that he is Lord. A person is going to be saved not by work. We have nothing to do. It's a beautiful example here. Man has to do nothing for the salvation. 
Only two things he has to do. He has to believe in heart and confess with his mouth that Jesus is the Lord. So all the characteristic feature of a sinner who is confessing and coming to the Lord, we see in, the, in this thief. He admitted that he is worthy of death because of his do doings. And he admits that Jesus Christ is the innocent one. And he publicly confesses that he is the Lord and he will come again. So if anyone who is listening to me today, please think about it. That Jesus is coming again. Believe in Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Now his death, we see that. He, normally the Romans, they prefer that the death should continue, that they should continue for a long time. But because of a festival there on the Passover day, they decided that they should be hastened in their death. To, to fasten the death, the Romans normally they break their legs. They came to Calvary to break the legs. And we see that they broke the legs of both the thieves. They were alive. But when they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, we see that he is already dead. Because the death of Jesus is very unique. As a sinless person, he cannot die. It is impossible for Lord Jesus Christ to die as any human being because he is sinless. The death is the wages of sin is death. How a sinless person can die? No. Jesus cannot die. But he died because he has the power. Lord Jesus Christ himself says, I have the power to give my life and to take it back. So on the cross we see that Jesus willingly gave his life. And on the third day he rose again because he took it back. So we see the death of Lord Jesus Christ is unique. And in this passage, we see how the impact of the cross, we see that. It can convert the most wicked, notorious criminal. It can convert. It changed the mind of the people. And we see that he confessed and came to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing we see here. Here we see the wonder of the cross, the power of the cross, we see that. And we see that Jesus Christ told him very clearly, Today I say unto thee, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now the question is rising, Where is this paradise? Where the thief gone? Now, thief, probably the, this thief was the last person who entered into the paradise from the Old Testament dispensation. Church was not started. He was not a member of the church. Some people think that the thief was a member of the church. No, he cannot be. Because the church has started after 40 days. So definitely more than 40 days it took the church to town the day of Pentecost started. So definitely the thief was not a part of the body of Christ. So probably he was the last person who entered into the paradise. We can see. And where is this paradise? That's the question. Now, it is believed that the Old Testament saints were in goes to paradise after their death. We have the illustration in the Luke's Gospel, chapter 16. The rich man and Lazarus. We see the Lazarus when he died, the angels came and took him and took him to a place called the Abraham Bosom. So it is believed by the Bible scholars, this Abraham's bosom, which was mentioned there in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, was the place where the Old Testament saints remained after their death. And that place is the same as paradise. It was underneath the earth. And there are so many verses which show that it is underneath the earth. If you look at the uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. 
Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. We see that Jesus Christ, he went into the Sheol, into the lowest part of the earth after his crucifixion. And also Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. Also we have that. We will read that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Yeah. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. That means when Jesus Christ died, he descended into the lower parts of the earth, into the Sheol, into the paradise, into the Abraham's bosom. These are all the same thing. So he went there. That was the Sheol is the place where the departed souls are kept. So Old Testament saints used to remain there in Abraham's bosom or paradise. And if you read Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, there it is mentioned that Jesus was there in that place. It is called the heart of the earth. You look at that Matthew chapter uh, 12, verse 14. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the Son of Man will be there in the heart of the earth. So it is believed that it is down on the earth it is. So the Sheol, which is mentioned, it is in the down. That is a paradise. Paradise, differently, we, you know, Garden of Eden is considered a paradise. Some believe that the Garden of Eden was descended into the lower parts of the earth. Maybe during, just before the flood, well, Lord might have moved the Garden of Eden into the lower parts of the earth. If you read Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 18, 16 and all, if you read, we get an impression that the Garden of Eden was taken down into the lower part of the earth. You can read that, Ezekiel 31, verse 18. To whom art thou... Thus, like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden, yet shall thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou uh, shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. See, into the nether part of the earth, that is the lower part of the earth, they were brought down. So, it looks like that. It's not sure. So, it looks like that the Garden of Eden was taken down into the earth, underneath earth, and probably this so-called paradise may be that. That is the place where the Abraham's bosom is there. Lord Jesus Christ, when he died, he went into that paradise. And to them he declared that the victory which he won on the cross of Calvary. And he declared to them, all the saints, they heard it. And on the third day, as per the Ephesians chapter 4, we see that he ascended into heaven. Ephesians chapter 4, we really see that. He first he descended into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 9, chapter Ephesians 4, 9. In verse 4, 10, you see. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Yeah. He ascended up on the third day. So, Many of the Bible scholars believe that when Jesus Christ ascended on the third day, he, along with the Old Testament saying, he ascended into the Father's place. And he presented the Old Testament saints. We see that he gave captivity, uh, verse 8, you read the same chapter, uh, verse 7 and 8 also you read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Yeah, he led captivity captive. The Old Testament saints were in captivity there. Because the cross was not accomplished. When the cross was accomplished, the sins are forgiven. And Lord Jesus Christ took them on the third day and he ascended into the Father and presented them before the Father to proof of his resurrection and achievements on the cross of Calvary. So we believe that on the day of crucifixion, along with the thief, Jesus Christ 
went into the paradise or the place where the Abraham's bosom is there. He preached to them. He told them the achievements that he has done on the cross of Calvary. On the third day, he ascended into heaven. And we know that when the, the third day, when the baby came, Lord Jesus has test me not because I have not ascended into my father, it is mentioned. Afterwards, she was touching. So Bible scholars believe that there was a short period between that where he ascended into the father and presented the Old Testament saints before him. There's a possibility is there that we have to accept from these passages. So we see that today, now, all the saints, those who died, those who believe in Lord Jesus Christ, when they die, they are going in the presence of the Lord, where the Lord is there, absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, in that paradise, the Abraham's bosom, nobody is there. All the Old Testament saints are taken along with him. And definitely, the thief also was taken there. What a wonderful promise the God has made to the thief today. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes, the thief who was destined to go to hellfire. He was about to go to the hellfire. He was very close to the door of hell. But from there, the Lord has snatched him, took him and to heaven. As somebody has rightly said, this thief, all throughout his life, he was stealing, stealing, robbing everyone. And the last moment of his life, he robed even paradise by faith. Yes, that can happen to anyone. This is the only death confession in the Bible. At the bed, deathbed confession. Some people, just before the death, they confess about their sins and come to the Lord. But this is the example in the Bible that deathbed confession in the Bible. Just before the death, he confessed and came to the Lord. We see the wonder of the cross. How impact the cross can create. A perverted man. He realized that Jesus is the king. And by faith he accepted him. Not by work. Absolutely not work. He has nothing. He can do the thing. His hands are nailed. His feet are nailed. Only his lips were free. His heart was open. He believed by heart. And confessed by the lips and accepted Jesus as the personal savior. What a wonderful thing we see here. The impact of the cross on the life of this man. This can happen to any one of you. If, if anyone is there who has not accepted Jesus as the personal savior, I pray that this message should touch your heart. The Lord can convert you, change you. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for sinners and believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Accept him as the Lord and be a partaker of the paradise or the presence of the Lord. May God bless these words to our hearts. Amen. And we thank God for blessing us once again uh, through his words. We remember the very famous song, The Dying Thief Rejoice to see the fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. And God has helped us once again to uh, look at the second person, the second key person uh, on the cross of Calvary today. Uh, as I hand over to Brother Suresh Balikati for a word of prayer, um, just want to remind you of tomorrow's class. So we'll have a uh, continuing uh, topic continued from the musings from Life of David by Brother Vagi Shaka from Mumbai. Same time, request your prayerful participation. May I hand over to Brother Suresh Balikati for a word of prayer. Yeah. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you and praise you for the wonder of the cross. Yes, Lord, as we have heard from uh, Dr. Koshi Matthew, sir, uh, we are really enlightened by the things that took place at the last moment in the life of the thief who, was, who became a saint uh, and he went into the presence of the Lord to paradise. So Lord, we have seen wonderful things concerning uh, the people who came to the, who were at the cross, Simon the Serene, the thief on the cross and the centurion. 
So all these people who have come from the uh, from the uh, generation of uh, Noah, and uh, they were how they were they carried on, and how the things have happened all through the generations, and how we have seen they all they reviled, they railed, railed uh, at different uh, uh, people, group of groups of people. But this thief also was one of them in the beginning. But when he came to know about the Lord Jesus Christ as the, the savior and as the king, as the one who is going to come back, his life was totally changed. He believed the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart and he confessed the Lord Jesus Christ from his mouth and he was granted the greatest blessing of his life and that is <clears throat> the eternity through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Yes, how wonderful things have happened at the very foot of the cross and even on the cross itself. And we have seen about how the the Old Testament people, uh, saints were in the, uh, in the shoal, but now that is no more <clears throat> because the moment we die, the, we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we don't die, then we have the wonderful privilege of being um, glorified in our bodies and taken to be with him on the day of rapture. So what a blessed hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ who has made all these things for his children, the blood-bought children, the saved flock of God, of the Lord. <clears throat> so Heavenly Father, we rejoice at all these facts and we pray that uh, people would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who has made the way so simple and so plain and so clear. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit may work in the hearts and lives of the people as the gospel is preached to them, shared to them, made known to them. They may all come to know the Lord Jesus and be saved and be blessed in their life with the wonderful hope of being with him forever and ever. So Lord, thank you once again, Lord, for this wonderful message that we heard from Dr. Koshi Matthew, sir. And we pray that you would continue to bless him and use him mightily for the honor and glory of your name, for the salvation of souls, for the edification of the believers. Thank you also for Brother Tom Jacob, uh, who was able to uh, lead the gathering today. And we pray for all our people who have heard the message <clears throat> of the wonder of the cross, that they would be really uh, enlightened and encouraged to go on sharing about this to the people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and also, Lord, we thank you for Brother Joy, Joy Maring Gatari and the uh, whole of his team, dedicated team, who are behind this uh, Bible Studies TRC ministry. We pray that you would continue to bless them and uh, guide them and lead them and provide all their needs and continue to use them mightily for your glory and honor. Thank you for this, the safe uh, and the smooth uh, internet connection also that we had. All glory to you, Lord Jesus, as we commit our lives into your hands uh, and as we uh, proceed with our day's work. May our lives shine for you. May we live for the honor and glory of your name. We ask all these things, giving praises and thanks in Jesus' precious and worthy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Swish Brother, once again for helping us with the word of prayer. Uh, thank you, Koshi Matthew Uncle, also. Thank you, brothers and sisters. May God bless you.